in the Slovians' direction, the Russians seem to be switching their line of attack. Right now no active action takes place in this region, however, more and more reports appear, suggesting that the Russians are conducting active aerial reconnaissance in the Barvinko direction. As you remember, this is the direction in which the Russians moved initially, several months ago. Barv however, after weeks of intense fights the Russians were forced to stop their offensive operation here, because the Ukrainians allocated too many forces to this direction. Right now the Ukrainians have less forces here, because main fights are taking place on the line Sivisk Solitar Bakhmut. That is why the Russians might again try to break through the Ukrainian defense in this region. By taking Barvinko, not only would they be able to attack Sloviansk from a new angle, they would also be able to move west and south. British intelligence has recently published a report suggesting that the Russians right now are planning to break through Barvinkov and New York in order to take all the forces in the east in one big pocket. This is extremely dangerous because due to the lack of activity the Ukrainians de-emphasize defense exactly in these two locations. In any case, right now there is nothing to worry about because the attack on Barvinkov and New York can only start if the Russians manage to fully capture the whole Siversk Solitar Bakhmut region. In the Bakhmut direction, the Russians conducted several assaults. The target of the first assault became the town of Pokrovki. As you remember, the Russians here managed to capture the southern part of the town and are actively trying to push the Ukrainians out of the northern part. The Ukrainians here are in a very difficult position because the most reasonable way to retreat is to Solitar, however, the Russians got so close to Solitar that they have a limited fire control over Pokrovsk, so the Ukrainians here cannot 100% safely move back because the Russians are in the back as well. The fights here are still taking place. The target of the second assault became the settlement of Novolyansk, which is basically in the area of the Volohirska thermal power plant. After short clashes this attack was repelled. In the south, the Ukrainians continue creating conducive for an offensive operation conditions. Over the last several weeks the situation on the front line has been very stable. The changes happened only in two areas. The first area where there were some changes is near Davidov Brid. As you remember, in June the Ukrainians here conducted an offensive operation, which has halted very quickly and the Ukrainians lost control over most of the villages that they have taken. Nonetheless, because they managed to retain a bridgehead in a small forest on the other bank of the river, they were able to gradually push the Russians out of Lozov, Belohorivka and Andreevka. Right now no one controls these villages, however, the fact the front line was pushed further opens a possibility for a freer movement on the other bank of the river. The second area where there were some changes is in the northern part of this region. Here the Ukrainians managed to take back the village of Ivanivka. Some sources suggest that the Ukrainians managed to capture a lot of Russian soldiers in Visokopolia, but the confirmation is very scarce. On the contrary, many sources indicated that this village was under the Ukrainians for a long time. Overall, over the last month the Ukrainians in the south have not lost any settlement, while gaining a few. Right now the Ukrainians are focused on agglomerating a lot of forces in this region for the offensive operation, while they are also trying to damage Russian supplies and supply infrastructure. When it comes to the destruction of bridges, I have not found further updates. In the meantime, the US announced a new $270 million security package that includes additional four HIMARS, artillery ammunition rounds, anti-armor systems, and 580 Phoenix Ghost drones. If you are against this war and want to support the work that I am doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols. You should also know that half of all profits from sales will go to charities that provide life-saving supplies and protection to children affected by this war.